We all know that the heavier you are, the harder it is to ride uphill. Unfortunately, this is just one of those sad facts of physics. Apparently, it's all to do with gravity, black holes, the speed of light, and yeah, E equals mc squared. If, like me, you have a somewhat limited understanding of the laws of physics, I'm more of a picture sort of chap, the good news is that there are a few things that you can do right now to make climbing just that little bit easier if you are carrying a few extra kilos. One of the most important and most effective things you can use to immediately improve your climbing is actually your brain. That well-known philosopher and evil cartoon baby Stewie Griffin once said, whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. I can't do the voice. Sometimes a climb's reputation is enough to make you think that it's going to be impossible, even before you've seen it in real life. But don't be intimidated. Simply believing that you can make it up and not listening to your inner doubt can really go a long way to getting you to the top. To help with this, it's important to stay calm, not worry about what other people are doing around you, and not to think about how slow you may be going. Just try to focus on three things. Your pedaling, your breathing, and if you can actually see it, the summit of the climb. And tell yourself that with literally every single pedal revolution and breath you take, you're getting closer. Before you know it, you'll be coasting down the other side. Equally, being faced with a long climb can seem overwhelming. In this case, I would suggest breaking it down into a number of shorter, manageable segments. So instead of one single three kilometer climb, think of it as three one kilometer sections. It also helps to focus on getting a short-term target, such as a signpost or a tree. When you reach it, find the next one, get to that, find the next one, and so on. Sitting in the same position can be very tiring, so try to stand up from time to time to give yourself a posture break. This will also help to flush out some of the lactic acid building up in your muscles. Standing on the bike is also a bit like having a couple of extra lower gears, so it can be a very beneficial technique on particularly steep sections. When you approach a bend or a hairpin, always try to take it on the outside as wide as possible, as this is always going to be much, much easier than the inside. It may be the slightly longer way round, but the gradient will be just that little bit less. If you do have to stop and catch your breath, don't beat yourself up about it. Even the pros have found themselves in this situation from time to time. When it happens, take as long as you need to recover and only then get back on the bike and continue riding or start walking. Now, unfortunately, if you're in cleats, neither of these options is going to be easy, especially if the climb is steep. You may not be able to build up enough momentum to get both feet back in the pedals or you may have to walk in your socks if you don't want to slip up. Classic climbing technique is centered on gear selection and cadence. The basic theory is that you try to stay as close to your home cadence, or the pedaling rate at which you naturally ride, as much as possible. You then use the gears to compensate as the gradient increases and it becomes harder to pedal. Now this is all fine and dandy if you're a regular sized rider, but for us heavier cyclists it's not going to take too long before we run out of gears and have no choice but to grind away in the smallest cog. When this happens, all you can do is again take your time, focus on your breathing and your pedaling technique, 
and make sure that each pedal stroke is as effective and as efficient as possible. If you can, try to synchronize your breathing in time with your pedaling, paying particular emphasis on your exhaling, as this is where your body gets rid of all of the waste products such as carbon dioxide. If it helps, you can also try to visualize yourself breathing out dirty, polluted air and inhaling clean, rejuvenating air. It can also help to take an especially deep cleansing breath every 30 seconds or so. Good climbing technique is all about effort management, so keep an eye on your heart rate, using it almost like a rev counter in a car. I would suggest setting a limit of around 85% of your maximum. If you see it going above this, ease back on your pedaling speed until it drops back down again. This will give you a micro recovery period and stop you from going too far into the red too soon. As you approach the top, by all means push it a bit harder, especially if you're going for a PR on Strava. If the climb isn't too steep and you're able to maintain some kind of home cadence, the rhythm of your breathing is still very important, although you should also have the luxury of it not being quite so laboured. Again, focus on exhaling and ridding yourself of all of that carbon dioxide. It also helps to try and relax your body as much as possible on the bike, especially in your legs, and just let them turn over almost by themselves. One of the few advantages of being a heavier rider is that we're generally stronger than our lighter companions. That's to say we're able to put a higher power or greater number of watts through the pedals. Now obviously when faced with any kind of gradient we lose a lot of this advantage, but it's still worth keeping in mind that for any given gear we can apply a higher force. If the climb is short, say a couple of hundred meters, there's a lot of benefit in staying in a reasonable gear and simply powering your way up. Yes, it will be tough, but fortunately there is usually a nice downhill immediately afterwards to help you recover. Now of course the most dramatic way of really improving one's climbing speed is to lose a few kilos. I've left this until last because it does take time and a considerable amount of effort. How you do this is entirely up to you, but what I would say is that in my humble opinion, for us heavier riders it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever to invest too much in a super light bike or lighter components. Basically, the 200 gram advantage that you could potentially get from a carbon seat rail will almost certainly be lost at the cafe stop with the 300 grams a slice of cake will add. If you truly want to lighten up, I would say that it's much better to lose it from the old beer and pizza muscle. Firstly, it will be much greater than any upgrade will ever give you, plus it will be much better for your overall general health. To give you some idea of the actual benefits of lightening the load in cycling terms, I did an experiment a while back. Basically, the long and the short of that was, if you can lighten up by say 10%, you will either be 10% faster up any given climb if you maintain the same power, or you'll require 10% less power to get up the same climb with the same speed. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether you're a skinny 20 year old or a lummoxing heavyweight. Climbing should not be easy. Climbing is all about the challenge, be it against others or yourself. In many cases, how fast one gets up a climb doesn't matter one iota. The real achievement is that you've successfully got up it at all. Thanks for watching.